G'day there, this is Paul the Mystic Guy and this video takes a look at Mystic version 1.12 Alpha 38. That's right, we've moved on a couple of Alphas since the last video. In fact, Alpha 37 and 38 were pretty much released the same day at the beginning of 2018. And on the screen at the moment I've got a copy of the system that we've been working with with the various video tutorials so far. So this is currently running Mystic uh, version 36 from memory. We'll just check that by going mystic-ber and here we have, I've got uh, version A Alpha 36 compiled on the 3rd of December. Now I have a fresh install of Mystic uh, 1.12 Alpha 38 and I'm just going to fire that up and bring the configuration screen into view as well because before we get into the finer points of what's changed in this version I just want to show you the very obvious changes and you can see here on the left is the latest alpha and on the right is the uh, alpha 36 so you can see we've got a new menu for networking and we've obviously got some changes in the various menu options so key change in the latest version on your left is that the networking side of things so that's like the echo mail addresses and nodes have been pushed out of the configuration menu and now are sitting in their own networking menu so when you were going in and checking your echo mail addresses on the, uh, the system we've been working with it's now sitting here at the top of the networking menu. This is just a stock install so you can see nothing's been configured. Also we have uh, echo mail nodes sitting in this directory which used to be in configuration. There is a new entry here called echo mail groups. Now that is work in progress and I'm not going to get into that in this video because it's still under construction. There are a couple of further uh, headings here for area fix help and file fix help. Now we didn't see those before but this is effectively firing up a, um, an editor which I'll get to shortly so you can change some messages. The servers menu is uh, pretty much the same as it was except there's been some tidying up of the, uh, the menu labels so instead of edit blacklist.txt it's now called the edit IP blacklist. Uh, likewise you can edit an IP whitelist and now we have edit country blocking instead of the file name which was IP location. On the editor's side of things, things are fairly much the same menu wise but where it gets really different is when you go have a look at the other menu in the new Alpha 38 and here you'll find a whole bunch of new things including access to an ANSI and text editor plus the ability to edit a number of files and also call up the version information which you can see is the Alpha 38 that I'm demonstrating to you today compiled on the 1st of January 2018. So what I'm going to do is I'll quickly pause the video and upgrade our working version, this one on the right, so that we're comparing apples with apples. Uh, if you haven't uh, already upgraded your system, check some of my earlier videos or simply just check the update.txt, I think it's called update.txt, upgrade.txt in the uh, Mystic directory and that will talk you through what you need to do to move between whatever version you're on and the latest version that you've downloaded. Right now, a couple of minutes has passed and I've run the update so if we check the versioning now it should move from uh, version 836 and you can see now it's reporting alpha 38 from the start of 2018 which is all good. So here is the configuration side set up again this time with the live data in there so if we go into networking and look at echo mail addresses you'll see that the uh, the temporary addresses that we've been using in our tutorial etc are set up. So what's changed? There's quite a bit that has gone on and I thought I'd break it into four distinct sort of sets of bullet points and the first one is really just taking a look at some of the changes in Mutil which is the Mystic Utility. Now Mutil as you will know if you've been following the videos is a bit of a Swiss army knife and it contains a number of functions and I've just highlighted here a few bullets from the what's new text that really picks up what's changed in this uh, version. There are significant changes in this move to Alpha 38. Firstly, Mutil now has a new function for purging the user base. So you can mark users who have not connected to the BBS in so many days for deletion. And the way to run that is if you bring up your, I'll just bring up notepad here. So firstly what we're doing is we're focusing on 
um, a few functions and that's really these three down the bottom which are the new ones. So the first one we're looking at is purging the user base. Now you would set that to true and then further down I've just hidden some of the stanzas there is a purge user base function here and you can see there's one option in this uh, stanza you can set a value for deleting users that haven't called in so many days so in this case it's set at 180 that's the out of the box default and it says you can't also set them anything less than a week so if you want to use that function at some stage to tidy up your user base you can I personally don't do much with this um, sometimes I may run that but generally I leave most of my user records intact except obvious ones which I just delete and then I use the second function which is highlighted in the texts here which I will bring up. The second one is a pack user base function which physically deletes the user records, any private messages, last read pointers, basically it wipes them out of the database. Now previously that was a separate function called mbbsutil but now it's been merged into the mutil functions and there is at the top of the screen pack user base sitting here which you would set to true and then there is nothing in terms of uh, settings that you can apply in the actual stanza so if you run it you run it and then it just removes deleted users from your user base so if you've got an earlier version of mystic and it says deleted 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 against their names this is a nice way of tidying that up and things will look a lot better then the next one is that uh, mutil also has a function now to sort files and file bases called file sort which also replaces a similar function in a standalone executable called MBBS Util. And uh, I should point out that is now defunct, so if you still have that in your directory after upgrading to 1.12 alpha 38, you should be deleting that now. So this works um, for bases that contain up to 250,000 files. That's a fair whack of files, and you should be able to get away quite happily with that, I'm sure. Um, the stanza or the function at the top, file sort, so you would set this to true and then down the bottom of the any file or thereabouts you'll find file store, sort stanza and a couple of options you can choose the attribute in which you're going to sort on so if it's zero it's the file name one the file size two the date three the number of downloads and then you can also set the direction so an ascending or descending order depending on the way that you set those switches so those are some significant changes to mystic because one we've got three new functions. Uh, secondly, MBBS Mut uh, Util has been removed and is no longer uh, in place. So that's a depreciated uh, executable. And lastly, I just wanted to point out too that there's been a change in the merge node list function. Uh, we picked up some issues where some of the um, node lists contained within archives, zipped archives, were uh, in various cases, uh, some were uppercase, some were lowercase, and in some instances uh, Mutil was having some concerns around how to interpret that, so now the author has changed things so that it is case insensitive, it doesn't matter. So if you had picked up some funny nurglings going on with that, that's uh, the story with uh, Mutil there. Alright, so that's the first of th four things that I want to cover off. The second one I want to take a look at is the Mystic Text Editor. Now this has uh, been a wee while in the making and it's wonderful to see it arrive. Mystic now has a built-in text editor which will be expanded as development continues. Now you can see it in the system configuration screen and I pointed that out earlier. It's sitting here under other text editor and I'll just fire that up and here is, this is a text editor, a very basic, I shouldn't really say basic because it will be continually en enhanced, editor. Now if I press escape I get a pop-up menu and I have some options here. I can call up uh, help which doesn't seem to be there at the moment but I will carry on. Uh, you can jump to the first line, jump to the last line, exit, save, save as or open a file as well. So it's a pretty comprehensive editor. Give it a go, have a play, you'll find it very useful and the reason it is so useful, I will exit out of this and not save, is that it's been built in now to serve a number of um, text files that are sitting in the Mystic system. So for argument's sake, if you're in servers, you can go in 
and use the text editor to edit a blacklist text list, so um, an IP list. So these are all the IP addresses you want to block from hitting your Mystic system. Just use the editor. You can add and delete things that um, should or shouldn't be there. Likewise, you can do the same for the whitelist. You can edit a country blocking file as well. So if you want to do those changes we looked at earlier, uh, all of that is available now. I think the last video we did, it was um, being developed, but you couldn't do that editing. Likewise, the editor's been deployed for a bunch of other things too, which I'll let you explore. But you can see you can edit various templates. So you've got a new user welcome template. So this is something you should be updating and customizing if you're setting up a Mystic VBS from scratch. Uh, you can just write your, your basic um, customized message there, escape out of there, save that, job done. Uh, the other thing I want to point out too is that you can, uh, there are two things, you can invoke this editor from the command line. So if we get the command line up and we go mystic-text, then we can um, choose a file. So if I knew that there was a file in there at the moment, I wonder if I can do this, C uh, data whitelist.text. No, it didn't work. Oh, that's because I've actually made a mistake there. I'll get out of there. Escape. Wasn't thinking, was I? Mystic data whitelist.txt. There you go. So you can jump straight in from the command line and edit various files. Um, if you read the notes that are on the right hand side of your screen as I talk about this, you'll also see that there's a, um, a caveat here. Um, that if you just provide a file name that doesn't exist, so let's just create one in the data directory called pool.txt, why I don't know, then it's going to, this is my text file, it's going to work quite happily and save that, which it's done. I just hit S for save, I'll get out, and if I go into data, dir-star.txt, you should see in there there's pool.txt as well. So bunches of files in there that we can play with and away we go. Last thing to show you about the text editor is that if you are running the um, configuration side of things and you're sitting in editors, menu editor, and I'm going to just edit the main menu and I'm going to add a new function, or a new menu option. And I'm just trying to decide where I want to put it. Oh, I'll just stick it at the top. So we'll insert this new idea, this um, menu option. I'm going to change it to edit text file. Just to be really easy, I'm going to assign the number 8 to that. I'll get rid of these high bar ones, make the hotkey 8, tab down to the actual commands. Now what we want to do is find this one here, star.1, edit text file. So you can set that up. Now in the data directory you can pass a text file to edit. And that means that this menu will only, command will only edit that particular text file. If you don't provide that, then the text editor is not going to execute. You see there also the user cannot open any other text files unless the open parameters is supplied. So if you do that, you potentially allow the user to edit any file on your system. So just be wary of that and think about it before you carry on and do too many changes. Not to say it's a bad thing, just needs to be thought through in terms of how you set this up. But anyway, that's the text editor. And in the same light, there is a, I'll get out of that, there is a ANSI editor, which is the third of four things I wanted to show you in this video. And much like its counterpart, the ANSI editor and the, like it's text, the text editor, the ANSI editor also will open from a command line and it looks like this. Now if you press escape you've got the ability to change foreground colors, background colors, 
You can change character sets here. You have the ability to open and save files. So let's open a file up and straight away it's dropped me into the Mystic text directory and if I wanted to I can open up a, a bit of ANSI. Let's find something here. Here we go. Nice. So I can instantly edit this ANSI if I wish to using this editor and then save it. It's a brilliant editor. I can't praise it enough. It's going to make life so much easier if you want to do changes to graphics on your Mystic system. And likewise there is a menu command there which I'm not going to get into but it follows the same principles as what I just showed you before for the text editor. Let's move on. And boy there's a lot to cover isn't there. Final section is this here, which is the um, few system changes. So in fact I've actually probably covered some of this. I'll just get out of this. So it does say there is a new text editor option. There it is sitting there. The system configuration does have the ANSI editor. We've already touched on some of these other uh, files. You can explore those at your leisure. Uh, version information is comprehensive as you saw at the beginning of this video. So if you're ever unsure you can also get that detail from the configuration screen. The other change that's been made in this version is in the themes editor. So when you go into editors themes prompt editor and we'll just drop into the default editor there are some changes over here on the right hand side of the screen. So firstly there is now a templates option which when you open it up it opens a listing of any any file that is related to that particular theme and those are the ones that are sitting in the text directory and then if you want to edit those you can. So we have the ANSI uh, index. So this is the index message reader that uh, previous videos we've looked at. And if you want to you can change some of the settings and the switches right from here rather than having to uh, use another editor. Brilliant isn't it? If you want to as well you can drop into display files in the theme editor which again takes advantage of the ANSI uh, editor that we featured earlier and it does display any ASCII uh, files in the ANSI editor or it will just it'll load up any uh, ANSI files as well that you need to change. So just a really nice comprehensive way of packaging things up for the Mystic system. So plenty to see in Alpha 38 of Mystic 1.12. If you haven't upgraded I suggest you do, it's well worth it. There are a heap of Python functions that I haven't even touched on um, and do keep an eye on the wiki site which is being added to uh, by yours truly and a few others as well. Uh, the Mystic Author is hard at work so we're slowly fleshing that one out as well. But thank you as always for watching. Please like and subscribe to the uh, video. Remember to click on the little bell if you want to get alerts next time I publish a clip and uh, we'll certainly be back again soon. But for now, Thanks for watching, we'll catch you again soon.